I mean, well, let's let's pick it up there, Flannel. As the dust has settled, you still view the Red Wings season as an epic collapse and failure. <laughs> it's, Should Steve Eiserman be fired today? Are you no. are you shocked Steve Eiserman still employed? No, no, I'm not. I'm not shocked at that. And after a couple of days, I still say that this season is a failure. But if you want to look at some positive things, I will say this. I will say that their offense and their goal scoring, it did improve dramatically. I got Lucas Raymond, we now, we pretty much know for sure now is him. Dylan Larkin had the best season of his career when he was healthy. Patrick Kane gave you more than you could have ever asked for in his midseason acquisition. And then Alex Dabrinkit, he basically had identical numbers as he did last year in Ottawa. And certainly at times he was a big part of this offense. And even a guy like JT Comfer, even though he struggled down the stretch, I think he's one of those you can look at as also a positive signing. When you look at Steve Eiserman's draft history, even with what he did in uh, Tampa Bay, and I'll, I'll give him credit for this as, as well. The fact that he was able to get a guy like Andre Vasilevsky, who is honestly, on the GOAT trajectory. Maybe not after this year, but certainly he's, he's, he, he'd probably be a Hall of Famer if he retired today. Gives me hope that a guy like Sebastian Kosa, who he drafted at a similar spot, not going to be Vasilevsky, but he's going to work, even with guys like Nikita Kucherov in a later round, Braden Point, and then with the Red Wings, you've got, obviously, Mo Sider, Lucas Raymond, top 10 picks. You've got Simon Evanson, who looks like he is going to be I think next year is the year he breaks out. It definitely gives you hope for some of the young guys in, in, in the system, like the Carter Mazers, the Nate Danielsons, the Marco Caspers, the Kosas, who I already mentioned, um, Axel Sendin Pel Pelica, guys like that. So all of those are positive, and I think that they're still headed in a good direction. However, there are a couple things that I just can't get past. One, their defense was still awful. And basically what, you, what Steve Eiserman did this offseason was you lost guys like Philip Horonic and like, you know, Jordan Osterley and Oscar Sundquist. Obviously, like, you're okay with losing them. Who they added was basically Shane Gossespear, whose specialty is offense. He led the team in assists, I'll give him that, but defensively, eh. Jeff Petrie, who's ass. He's not just ass, he's old ass. Damn. Justin Hole, who can't crack this rotation. And then the goalie duo of Alex Lyon, who is ass, and James Reimer, who is old ass. <laughs> That's what, and, and that all leads to a defense That's which nice. wasn't any better than it was last year. <laughs> not, not even a little bit. Look at the numbers. It's basically the exact same. And also, those stretches, man. Th those stretches, I'll even, look at, I'll even look at December. You had a couple of really, really bad losses. In December, you lost at home to Ottawa. You lost at home to San Jose. And you lost at home to Anaheim. Cannot happen under any circumstance whatsoever. And then to start off, obviously, they had that 5-12 and 12 stretch. They started that off with a seven-game losing streak in which they got outscored 36-12, to 12, followed by a win, and then followed by a game at Pittsburgh in which... They gave up six goals and lost six to three. And also, in that late season stretch, you had two games against Washington. They got four points. Red Wings got one. You had two games against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, a non-playoff team. Pittsburgh got four points. Red Wings got one. You had two games against Arizona. Arizona got four points. The Red Wings got zero. Zero point zero. And you also had, during that losing streak, a loss in which you gave up seven goals to the lowly to, to lowly Buffalo. They're not terrible, but, but they're not a playoff team. And also during that stretch, the other thing that I think is disappointing was the way their offense, which was mostly consistently good throughout the year, just completely basically took a shit and for a fourth of the season played like a bottom five offense in the NHL. And I understand. If you want to say that guys like Comfer and Fabry didn't step up in that, in that situation and they were regressing to the mean, I don't necessarily hate you for that. But to me, during that stretch, a guy like Alex Dabrinkit underperformed what you expected from him. I would say a guy like Daniel Sprong, who at the beginning of the year and for mo large stretches of the year was very good, he was playing so poorly he got benched. And then a guy like Joe Valeno, who was asked to step up a little bit more after Dylan Larkin went out, he basically gave you nothing. So I guess for all of the positives, the defense and the defense, the month of December, and that 5 12 and 2 stretch. That, to me, just can't happen again. And those are things that you can't just excuse away as nothing. And part of it you blame on coaching, part of it you blame on the players, and part of it you have to look at Steve Eiserman a little bit. So that's my, I would say, 30,000-foot view of this season. It still hurts, huh, Flannel? 
I mean, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, Burn in the chat. Uh, the fight song and the Let's Go Lions chant stay. They are ob our obnoxious version of the Viking <laughs> stupid horn. I, I, you know what? Yeah. I like that, Burn. If you want to look at it that way, Damn right. I'll listen to that pitch. That is true. That's like, hey, this sucks and we know it. And guess what? We're still going to do it. It's even better now that we're winning. I can't stress that enough, though. Now that we're winning, it is a great time to sing that song. Flannel. Yes. Uh, the Steve Eiserman. What would you have liked Steve Eiserman to do? Here's, here's the reality. I don't necessarily have all of the answers, but when your defensive signings, as I said, are Gostaspear, Petrie, Hull, Alex Lyon, and James Reimer, you don't just get a pass for that. You don't. And the fact that your defense hasn't improved at all over last year, you don't get a pass for that. And for the record, I understand that in the pipeline, you've got a lot of young defensive players coming up and a guy like Sebastian Kosa, who I think Spenmo Rex said he probably expects him to be in Grand Rapids for one more year. We shall see. That to me was the sin. Justin okay, Holt was well, a terrible well, signing. Horrible. He doesn't well, play. Yeah. Okay. And that's and that's fine. I'll give yeah. you that. Yeah. So you expect him, he's got to bat a thousand. No, no, every no he doesn't have to makes. bat a thousand. Every Keish, movie makes got to bat Keish a thousand. Keith wasn't a great move. Andrew Kopp wasn't a great move, given how much he's paid. I mean, Andrew Kopp, the previous two seasons of him coming to Detroit, he had a career year, which was a little injury shortened in Winnipeg. His best year, which included his best stretch with the Rangers. And then he comes to Detroit and has been less than, especially this year, 33 points in 79 games for a guy that on this team is paid like your 2C, which he most certainly should not and is not. Those are the type of signings that I look at as meh, along with like an Olimata. It's not like he's just made these amazing signings all of the time. I think the Perron one has been positive. I think the Ben Sherratt one has been has Com been positive. Comfer's been pretty positive. Yeah, Pop Comfer's been positive, but there's certainly some... But like the goalie things, Flannel, see, like, here's the nuance that you all miss right. all the time, all right? And you miss it every single time. I did this show with DMAC earlier this week, and be prepared, Yeah. because there's not going to be any moves made to the goalie room this year either. So There's just not, Flannel. So we're just going to accept year six of no playoffs. Because no, here's the thing. No, because the team should be good enough to get there regardless, right? Yeah. 100%, should be good enough, right? 100%, That's where I am with it. All right. Fair enough. Fair, fair enough. Now, are, are they going to be a Stanley Cup contender no, next year? No, you can't no. be with that goalie rule. No, but see, here, here, here's the thing. Like, you and some other people in this town that work at other networks, like, you, <laughs> it must be nice to offer up criticism but no solutions. Like, that. that's what I like that you people and people of your ilk do Sam Flannel <laughs> you because you, you pound the you pound the table and say Alex Lyon at at goalie now and then I would say to you so so what's the move then are you going to go make a blockbuster trade and bring in Vasilevsky here you have Kosa like is yeah. the dude right yeah. like is so. the one we hope so Co Sebastian is the one that you're ultimately going to be judged on if you're Steve Eiserman Kosa or whoever else you do that's that's the day of reckoning that's coming so again, I go to you, Flannel. What, what intelligent GM? What intelligent GM is going to say, "I'm going to make this move for the sake of making a move for a patchwork unit right here to bring somebody in for a year when I think I have my franchise coming up right now?" Well, I guess that would do it. I, I guess that's a. Uh... The, the story will be told. Ken on Holland that. would do some stupid shit like that. Yeah, but I've like, seen it. Yeah, but but Ken Holland. In, in an uncapped era was the GM for three Stanley Cups. So that, that's all. Right. That's, that's all. But in a capped era yeah, where we've ass. operated for over a decade and we're still feeling the effects <laughs> yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. again, you guys know when I look at the goalies that were on payroll then and what yeah. they were making. Oh, yeah. Remember Jimmy Howard at five and a half million? Mm. I do. Yeah. See, now that flannel, <laughs> that's a move there that at the time then you would embrace, right? You would embrace that kind of move. You just said it. I th no. You said he's got to do something, right? You said that. No, I'm not saying he's got to do something. I'm saying what he did, bringing in guys like Huso and James Reimer and Alex Lyon, all of them to some extent have failed. I know we, we like to pump up Ville Huso, but last year he wasn't very good either. I'm starting to think that Ville Huso was maybe a one-year wonder with the season that he had with the Blues. Honestly, Neil, I'm, I would say that I'm okay with seeing what what uh what Sebastian Kosa is however I just hope that one of them has a little bit like I mean I know James Reimer is going to be gone he's an unrestricted free agent but like an Alex Lyon or a Ville Husso let's just hope that they can regain well that 
Vele Husso can regain the form of what he had in 2021, 2022, and Alex Lyon can be a little bit better. I, I think I'm kind of with, with, with where you're at, Neil. I'm not expecting a Stanley Cup next year. I am definitely expecting playoffs, and I think it's more likely that the team around them continues to improve so that even if the goaltending isn't great, they'll be better. And hopefully better, better de them being better defensively, a whole season of Cider, hopefully a whole season of Wallman, a whole season of Edmondson, and we see what they do in the offseason. That will help the goaltending play. I don't necessarily have a solution for next season. I'll admit it. I don't know if, 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 I don't know if there's a good one, but it certainly hasn't been good enough these last couple of years. But this is a part of, of what he's doing, Flannel. And, and he's, he's told you that. He has flat out told you that, Flannel. So we just have to accept everything he says as the gospel, according to Steve Iserman. A reading from the gospel, according to Steve Iserman. <laughs> I would think so, yeah. I mean, the resume dictates that, doesn't it? Right? Tampa, I mean... Does the resume dictate that? Those draft picks at Tampa speak for themselves, and they have improved every year. I'll give you that. I'll Does Mo Sider and Lucas Raymond speak for themselves? 100%. 100%. So then what's the pro... Here's... Let me land the plane. So what's the problem? The problem was I wanted them to get in, and they had a couple of stretches. So, throughout the so season. your feelings got hurt. That's the no, problem. it's not my feelings got hurt. It's that playoffs hold currency. I know a lot of you like to act like the playoffs mean nothing, and they're just going to get swept, and who cares, and any of that. But it's just when you're talking about, and I get it. Given Steve Eiserman's draft history, it would show that a lot of these young guys who haven't even played in the NHL yet, who he's drafted, they will hit. But we don't necessarily know that yet. We're counting on. We'll see what he does in the offseason in terms of free agency to upgrade the defensive position. We'll, we'll, it, and then the guys in Grand Rapids right now, who we don't know if they're going to even be good. And certainly next year, we don't know what kind of contribution they're going to make. I don't necessarily, I'm not guaranteeing that they're going to just like win multiple cups. It seems like you guys think that it's just the, that it's just going to happen no matter what. And I'm not so sure. No, 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 Flannel. You can, you can never make that assumption. Sure. You can never sure. make that sure. assumption. All I can do is go by what I've seen and the resume from before. And again, 15% more points this year. There's been an ascension every single year. That's why I can't, you know, I'm not going to be disingenuous and say collapse, 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 collapse. You know, I'm because I don't, I don't do that. I don't fear monger. Okay. Like, but I don't, you were, I come at you with logic and stuff, but like you were that. also Mr. Car flag guy. And then you're like, Oh, they were always going to collapse. That was always going to happen. No, no, that was, that was a fun, that was like a fun bit that we did flannel. Like, come on, man. Okay. Nuance flannel. Okay. Nuance. But you were like, I brought the car flag movement back. I brought to bring it back. It's funny. During that I did. 19 I game, did deliver you that night, that 19 game stretch. They both took a shit. Both like, like the Red Wings and Alex to break it. And when the season was on the line, who was the man? It was too late. They had already forfeited their ability to control their own destiny. They I got you, Alex, to brink it for Tyler Bertuzzi. Well, that's, that's what a, I got you. That's that, that, that that's better. But Alex thank to break it certainly hasn't thank been you. his How about best. A thank you, Neil. I'm not thank you, Neil. I'm thank not going to thank you for that because thank Alex you. to break it. Oh, you're like, oh, we got Alex to break it, this superstar, and we're still not expecting the playoffs. And oh, by the way, Alex to break it certainly wasn't the best version of himself this year. He was what he was. Was he at better Ottawa. than Tyler Bertuzzi? Of course. I'm not an idiot. Okay. Obviously, he was better than Tyler Bertuzzi. Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure.